All right, all right. You are listening to Bras, Panties, and Sports. I'm Spitface, and I'm here with the always classy and sometimes sassy host of this show, the first lady of sports talk, the one and only, that's right, Cheryl Smith. Good morning, first lady. Good morning, good morning. Yes, I guess I'm going to be sassy today because we're talking my type of thing, basketball, basketball, basketball. Uh, 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 uh-oh, that right now you into the, the round ball bouncing on the hardwood floor. All right. Now check out the music this week on Shout Out. We are featuring performances from the Dawes Group. That's D-O-Z, the Dawes Group. Will they find their shining star or get the cold feel of the mute button? First lady, we're ready. What you saying? Each week, we try to figure out what is going on in the sports world. Not the plays of the week, more like the players of the week. Are they trying to tell us something? So we ask, what you saying? Fly, little birdie, fly. Time keeps on slipping into the future. Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. So I want to fly like an eagle to the sea, fly like an eagle, let the spirit carry me. I want to fly, fly right into the future. The little birdies known as the Los Angeles Clippers wish they could fly far, far away from a 3-3 three and three series with the pesky, pesky Mavericks. The Clippers were able to force a game seven, but... They are not looking like the team that was supposed to take the crown with the acquisition of Kawhi Leonard. Are the Los Angeles Clippers the Dallas Cowboys of the NBA? If they lose, is Kawhi looking for the exit? Marvelous Marvin Hagler, rest in peace, Bernard Hopkins, Roy Jones Jr., and the Steve Miller Band are asking, (laughs) what do you say? Well, you know, Smith says this series has actually made history as the hmm. first series where all six games were won by the visiting team. That has hmm. never been done before in the history of the NBA. Can you believe that? Never done before hmm. in the history of the NBA. Now, we have come to this game seven, and the major question, you know, definitely will be, Will the home team finally win the game? <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about the Los Angeles Clippers because they are the team that is at home, and I strongly believe that the Clippers will win game seven because Kawhi Leonard put the Clippers on his back and single-handedly beat the Mavericks in game six. I mean, it was a performance for the for for for, you know, for any NBA star. Mm. They always say the playoffs are where stars are made or propelled into stardom or whatever you want to call it. But Kawhi Leonard, we already know how great he was, but he showed how really great he is. <laughs> and that's why so many teams wanted Kawhi. But, but you know, but the Mavs, the Mavs had their chance to put this game away at home. Mm. But their young star, Luka, he didn't take over the game the way Kawhi did. And, and, and the thing about Luka He had a good game, but he was not aggressive within that last five minutes of the game. And the way that Kawhi Leonard was, he was so aggressive. Kawhi was in a zone. I believe he may have only missed one shot within the last five minutes. I I, I mean, I'm just thinking from memory when I watched it. But Luka, unfortunately, he kept passing the ball out, but never demanded the ball back from his teammate. That was the problem with Luka. He was very passive in those five minutes. Now, in reference to the Clippers possibly being the Cowboys of the NBA, heck yeah, I think I actually called them the Cowboys of the NBA. <laughs> I believe I did say that. Uh, and I can't remember, in one of the shows, I believe I said that. So, producers, thank you for putting that in this question. But, yes, they are because no other team in the NBA has the talent but never play up to their talent. And for mm. some reason, something always goes wrong for the Clippers. Just like the Cowboys, the Clippers are an accident ready to happen. And the Cowboys, you know, the difference though, the Cowboys have won Super Bowls and they have been to a conference championship. 
throughout the history of the team. However, the Clippers, man, they have never been to a Western Conference Finals. And we are talking about 37 years. Now, you know, the Clippers became the Clippers because initially they were the San Diego Clippers. But, you know, going back, I'm not going to go back through the history because actually they were other teams and they changed the name. But when they officially became the San Diego, San Diego Clippers, it was in 1984. So the Clippers have, have you know, they, 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 it's been 37 years. But hey. within the last several years, the Clippers have been relevant. So they are just like the Cowboys. The team has been all talk and no action, and they do chirp a lot, especially that Paul <laughs> George. <laughs> and the sad thing about this team, the team mortgaged their future to obtain Paul George. Now, mm. and that's the only reason why Kawhi would join, because he insisted that they get P- PG-13 to be on this team. So let me remind everybody about that trade for Paul George. Mm-hmm. They gave up a record number of Mm. They gave up Shea Gillis Alexander. They gave up Danilo Gallinari, who actually is with the the um, Hawks now. So actually, the um, Thunder. They traded them to the Thunder. The Thunder parlay Gallinari over to the, the Hawks for a pick. But anyway, the Clippers gave up five, Mm-mm. five first round draft. Oh picks. no, no, no! And the right yes, to swap two other first round draft picks. That is darn right crazy for one person. I mean, and we all know how poorly he played last year in the bubble. We remember all those issues from Paul George. So that was a massive ransom that Kawhi insisted that the Clippers pay for George, for Paul George. So the question is, will Kawhi be back with the Clippers? Because he is <laughs> He did decline his player option to become a free agent. But I'm going to tell you this, Spitface. Kawhi will have the gall to leave the Clippers if he does that. You know what? He, he has to. He had the gall after what he forced them to do, and he would sit up after two years and leave them? Nah, nah, no, no way. No way he will resign with this team. Because, like I said, he would have to have the outright gall to leave this team after what he had had what he had them mortgage to get Paul George. So I don't think he's going to leave. I think he's going to resign. It's just a matter of when these players do these contracts and they just want to uh, position themselves to have more leverage and he can get a better contract. So no, d- definitely not. Kawhi is staying with the Clippers. All right, Spitz, <laughs> with your opinion. Uh, you know, uh, the Clippers, boy, they, 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 uh, uh, there is, you know, when you get into the, you know, just the energy and uh, the, the, and the breaks that go your way, uh, they need their own home. You know, they the homeless team, you know. <laughs> you know, and, and how are you going to play? Uh, in a place that, you know, hey, uh, uh, the other team is the team. Even when they are a poor team, they're still the team. Uh, you know, that just is just, it's just like, you know, I, I, I don't know if there's karma or, you know, I'm sure somebody got something going on where they're like, man, look, you need to, y'all need to relocate back to San Diego or someplace because, uh uh, it's like there's a demand for you to be the second fiddle. You know, the whole atmosphere of the city is you, at the best, you're the second fiddle. Otherwise, we don't even care about you. You know, so, uh, uh, but the, uh, the, 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 I think the Clippers have shown uh, the issue with allowing players to dictate how you're going to build and do your team. You know, now there, you know, when uh, LeBron and, uh, uh, and and Wade and uh, Big Tall Guy, you know, say, hey, we're going to hook up, you know, we kind of, uh, uh, that was just, uh, at that time, that that wasn't so much they uh, demanded, it's just that they, you know, like, look, this is, we kind of agree, why don't y'all make it happen? Now, see, that, that that's a different kind of dynamic. 
But when you demand it, Deshaun Watson, you know, I'm going to tell y'all how I want things to be ran, you know, which ain't your job, you know, because you don't know all the mechanics. And the team bite, just, you know, bite like that. Uh, you know, uh, 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 now on, on the, on the uh, so, you know, it's just like, yeah, you, like I said, you set yourself up. You set yourself up for whatever Kawhi Leonard decide to do. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, one, you know, y'all are going to continue to be the Dallas Cowboys of the NBA as long as you playing in L.A. Or, or at least as long as you playing in the same building as the multi-time world champion, uh, Hall of Fame written, Lakers, come on! You got to get the hell up out of there. Uh, uh, talk to talk to the talk to this NFL team called the Jets. See how it'd be working out for them. <laughs> that split in the stadium. When the last time they won? Well, they did get one. <laughs> you know, come on. So uh, I, I think that you know it's just something about that. But. Um, uh, you know, I, I I have no zero confidence that Kawhi will repeat the magic, and uh, and they'll be able to uh, to beat the Mavericks. Uh, 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 it's gonna be some more history made, you know. But I have zero zero confidence in the Clippers. None, not a. And. Uh, so I, I I would uh, I might lose it, but I I put I put my dollar down on the Mavericks because I have zero confidence what the Clippers gonna do, and if Kawhi gonna repeat or somebody go oh choke at the wrong time. Now uh, now now back to Kawhi. Uh, Kawhi is Kawhi really <laughs> really a lot of them get the get the game and. Uh, and the game is is that no matter how great a player you are, you are expendable. For the right price, I will trade, make a deal. What? The greatest super uh, – they will do that. And they have proven that they will do that. So, you know, it's like I could get Kawhi saying, why am I doing y'all a favor? Because if you you got any leverage over me where you can get a better deal for you, I'm gone. I'm expendable. And and the word is going to be, well, that's just business. So Kawhi can do the same thing. You know what, buddy? You know, uh, uh, I got you bit for the deal that I wanted to do. That was a good deal for me. <laughs> you got your services. But why am I going to act like I got some kind of loyalty to y'all? You know, uh, 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 not, uh, not into the, uh, you know, shoot, go talk to the San Antonio about that, <laughs> you know. So um, uh, I see Kawhi going to a team in the East and maybe, well, no, I, I'm going to say I can see him going to another team and one where, hey, look, we can win now. The Clippers ain't going to win now. They ain't gonna, and now it's like in the next two years, ain't happening. So, uh, you know, this little birdie might fly away if they lose. That's all I'm saying, first lady. I mean, nothing is guaranteed when it comes to these players. But <laughs> um, I, I, if... if, if um, Kawhi were to leave, he would leave and go to the Lakers. I mean, he's not going to leave Los Angeles. Well, he was actually going to go to the Lakers, actually, before, again, he requested that they bring Paul George because he was going to go to the Lakers. So that's the only place I would see him going. It would be a West Coast team. I don't see him coming Mm. back to the East, you know, when he was with Toronto. You know, he he loves – he's a – California West uh, Coast kind of guy, the West Coast kid. So now nah, I don't see that happen. But anyway, we'll see. It'll be interesting this offseason because actually he is only he's one of the only true big player out there that's a free agent because most of all of the top free agents who would have been free agents re-signed with their teams, including mm-hmm. LeBron, which he has never done 
since he was with the Miami Heat. He <laughs> has never resigned with the team for four years. He did that with the Lakers. So anyway, all right, Spitface, over to you. All right. <clears throat> Kawhi and LeBron. Now that might be interesting. <laughs> I'm gonna, don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years, rocking my peers and putting suckers in bed, making the tears rain down like a monsoon. Listen to the bass go boom. Explosion. Overpowering. Over the competition. I'm powered. Reconcile when I drop these lyrics. Better make you call the cops. Don't you dare stare. You better move. Don't ever compare me to the rest. That all get sliced and diced. Competition paying the price. I'm going to knock you out. Huh? Mama said knock you out. Huh? We are talking about the knockout punch to the Lakers and the Miami Heat. Hopes of repeat. The Lakers went down four games to two. And the Heat, they broke out the broom. On the Heat. <laughs> Which team has the better chance of being in contention in 2022? Will LeBron have another shot at winning a title with the Lakers? Should the Knicks give up some picks to get the butler? Leroy Satchel Page, Walter Buck Leonard, and James Cool Papa Bell are asking what you're saying. You know, First Lady, uh, I, I am... Uh, uh, you know, I, I'm looking at the Lakers, and I'm like, uh, I, I, I did not, uh, one, I did not already had it that they weren't going to go far. And I'm not surprised that they lost in the first round because they ended up having to play in the in the, the playoff thing to get in. And I'm like, man, now, now if they had landed like, you know, maybe four, you know, something like that. Then I would say the Lakers, you know, uh, uh, they're going to be some competition. But they, they were already showing that they had some issues. And uh, it looks like their main issue is, like, kind of remind me of, uh, of the Great Wall. And only he started cracking around the feet and the legs. <laughs> So that great wall, he, you know, it's like, hey, look, you a bad boy when you on the court, you know. But you know that uh, you can, hey, you only fifty percent. Well, you ain't even fifty percent when you ain't playing. And, uh, uh, and and I have to, I don't really repeat other people's stuff, but maybe that nickname Street Clothes is appropriate. <laughs> Hope he got that bad designer stuff, you know. And uh, and uh, I, I think the other part is now, uh, as far as the Heat, I am surprised they got swept, you know. And uh, I, I probably should not have been surprised. And, uh, you know, they, they got talent, but they got, you know, they got work to do. But uh, uh, so, uh, you know, I... I, I I'm just surprised they got swept. I thought they would have went, went further, but uh, but but overall, I'm like, hey, you know, they 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 got work to do. Now, uh, I have said that this was LeBron's last shot at winning a title. Period. Well, the Lakers, anybody, he didn't sign the four, so he ain't going nowhere. This is his last sh- shot. But now, you know, there is that caveat. There is that uh, that that lone ranger who uh, had, you know might make a move, and uh, the you know and thinking how cold blooded Kawhi Leonard can be, uh, that is the ma- if the Nets go on to win everything, the Lakers gonna make a move and get Kawhi. So, you know, uh, we we shall see. And uh, now the Knicks, the Knicks, are good, give up, they, the Knicks can make a deal. <laughs> they ain't got to give up too much. I think they could get Jimmy Butler. And uh, he'd be perfect for that young team. And uh, they, they they could end up. So I, I think that they got, they, got some, they got some stuff they can work with that won't hurt the Knicks. Uh, that they can work, they can make a deal. You know, you know, my man. You know, he, you know, down there in Miami, y'all suited up. 
you know, and, and the vice president, is, oh, he's the president of the operation now. But, uh, you know, he, he won another ring. So, uh, First Lady, what you say? Well, it, this is a very difficult question to answer, you know, because as far as I'm concerned, as long as the Lakers have a healthy LeBron James mm. and a healthy Anthony Davis, and normally <laughs> LeBron doesn't get injured, but we all know Anthony Davis, has a track record of being injured. He has so much of a track record of being injured. Everybody has been talking about the <laughs> nickname that Charles Barkley gave Anthony Davis. He called him Street Suit. <laughs> street Suit. <laughs> because he's always in his streets. Is that the, that's what he called him, right? Street Suit. Yeah, because he's all he's always not well, ready I thought to it was play. street clothes. <laughs> oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Street clothes. That's my my bad. It was street clothes. Right. He called them street clothes. See how quickly I forgot? <laughs> <laughs> he called them street clothes. Exactly. Because he's always in street clothes when he sees them. And that is God honest truth. <laughs> Anthony Davis has only played, has, he hasn't played, I think somebody came out with statistics I heard this weekend. He hasn't played 20 percent of all his games that he could have played that's a lot mm. every year he's injured and so you know so many people are questioning what is he doing with his body like what are you doing in the off season you know lebron james spends over a million dollars on preparation of his body on the off season so mm. he need to talk to anthony davis but as far as i'm concerned if both of them are healthy they will always be in contention for a title but um, I, I think the Lakers have a better chance than the Heat. And, of mm. course, I'm basing this off of the current squads. Now, both squads, the teams, both teams have core players for the next season. The Lakers have LeBron, Kyle Kuzman, and uh, Anthony Davis, and Cartavius Caldwell Pope. They are assigned to long-term deals. The Heat, they have Butler, they got Bam Alabado. They got Tyler Hero. He's a rookie, so he's on his rookie deal. Plus, they got team options on Goran Dragic and Andre Iguodala. So both teams really have major decisions regarding other supporting cast. However, I'm still going to give the edge to the Lakers because I seriously doubt LeBron will. I really seriously doubt, though, LeBron will win another championship with the mm. Lakers. Because there's just too many teams that are getting better in the West <laughs> and the East that can contend for title. And I'm just sorry. History is not going to change. And because of Anthony Davis always being injury, that's going to be the major factor, really. He, he I don't remember him ever playing the full season. <laughs> So, no, so yeah, I, yeah, I mean, your memory is good on that, though. Yeah, he has because, not you know, played a full season. Yeah. Now, LeBron normally doesn't get injured, but he was injured the first year that he came to the Lakers. I think he had a hamstring injury. And then this season, it was because of that ankle injury that he had. He had sustained that ankle injury, and, you know, he said he wasn't going to be mm. his normal self. But... I still think they have a better chance than the Miami Heat. And, um, you know, LeBron, though, in the past, you know, LeBron always could carry a team to the finals by himself. But unfortunately, mm. Father Time, <laughs> along with injuries, are catching up to LeBron. And he it's just the, couldn't do it's it. The this miles. Was, it's the this, miles. <laughs> yeah, this was the first time in his 18 season that he was bounced out of the first round of the playoffs. So, so you know, it's hard because you can't deny Father Time. And LeBron just wasn't himself. He, he can't carry a team. He, he is a number two player now. Even though before that injury he was playing on an MVP level, but he's no longer a number one. That's why he needs Andrew, Anthony Davis to be healthy, and they do need a number three. They do number need a number three. Now, in reference to Jimmy Butler, I seriously, and I say seriously doubt that the New York Knicks will do any type of business with the Heat president, Pat Riley. <laughs> now, there's so much uh -oh. there uh -oh. that I really don't think 
it would, and it hasn't subsided to me because I'm a New York Knicks fan and I live and die with the orange and blue. And we don't like Pat Riley because you know why we don't like Pat Riley? Because when he was the team coach, when he was the coach in the 90s, he faxed over his resignation letter to the Knicks management. And ever since then, they have had bad blood. So you can forget. Get Jimmy Butler coming to the <laughs> New York Knicks. And in addition to that, Pat Riley, he doesn't believe in building through the draft. He gets lucky to have draft picks, but he's constantly getting rid of his draft pick. Matter of fact, they don't even have a draft pick for this this current um, <laughs> draft. They don't have a draft pick. They gave up all their draft picks. So the thing is, um, he's always looking for that big star. And he's not giving up Jimmy Butler because he could potentially be a super, superstar. I don't think Jimmy Butler is there yet, but he's not going to give up Jimmy Butler for, for draft picks. without with No, no, that is not going to happen for those two reasons alone. And the thing is interesting, Spitface, the two teams that went to the finals in the bubble, they got bounced out the first round. <laughs> so it really questions the legitimacy of their accomplishment within the bubble. It really does. And, you know, a lot of people are starting to question that. But, I mean, hey, a championship is a championship. We can't take that away from LeBron. But, really, both teams got bounced out the first round. I mean, the Bucks. I mean, that was ridiculous. The Heat lost in four games. They were swept. So just to show you, I know that things are not right for these two teams, and these two teams are definitely at a crossroad, definitely Mm. at a crossroad, because you will have to see which team makes the right decisions for their future. And I'll bet on Miami Heat on that over Rob um, Palinka, because, you know, Pat Riley is the godfather when it comes to trade. <laughs> even though he got he even though he lost that trade with Victor Oladipa. I mean the the Houston Rockets got over on that trade because Oladipa was injury. The only good thing for the Miami Heat. They know what happened to Oladipa, so now they know they don't need to sign him to no long term contract. So he lost his opportunity to get a big payday. He should have stayed with the Indiana Pacers and taken the money that they offer him. Mm. But anyway, I'm going to bet on the Miami Heat when they come to the right decisions. Mm. All right. All right. Okay, well, First Lady, please, please take us to break. Stay tuned. Coming up next, we have a performance from the Dawes Group on Shout Out Part 1. The music flows in from around the globe to get a shout out from the panel. First lady, I can't wait to hear the music from the Daz Group. On Shout Out, we feature new independent artists who are looking to find their shining star. If we like what we hear, we'll give the track a shout out. If we don't like it, we hit the mute. Today we are featuring music from the Daz Group. Now they say pop and R&B, we're a family group making music to make you happy and make you dance. Coming from South Jersey, oh my gosh, my old stomping ground where I grew up, South Jersey, we are here to make music that makes you feel better about real love and what it's supposed to be. Trying to change the dynamic of what's going on in the wacky world in which we live. We're trying to keep everything on an upbeat as opposed to dark, gloomy, and sad one. All right, let me hear my homies. The song, Always Be My Baby. All right, hit it. Oh, 
Okay. All right. That's the Dodd Band out of South Jersey. Uh, woo. Well, I'm going to tell you this. Since they're from South Jersey, I'm going to give them a shout out. <laughs> Even though I really didn't understand a word they sang, to be honest with you. I don't know, Spence, if you understood what they were singing, but I really didn't. But it, it sounded, I guess, the music was okay. Uh, they gave me the impression that they were almost trying to mimic, and I can't believe they were because it's probably as a young group trying to mimic uh, Sly Stone and the um, Sly Stone and, and, and the Family Stone because you know they had that little. From what I could tell from the music, they had that kind of vibe to me. But if I, I really couldn't understand one lyric of me, but anyway, I'm gonna shout it out. What do you think, Spitzface? Uh, I gotta hit the mute. <laughs> I gotta hit the, the the music drowned out any singing, <laughs> you know. So that that was just bad production, and yeah. then it, and then the singing sounded like it really didn't go with the music. So that was out of sync. So you know, I I, I think that you know that uh, if they had just did the singing with a simple beat, it might have went over a little bit better. But then it makes you wonder, well, why would I drown out? You know, singers want to be heard. Why would I drown out my singing if it was that good <laughs> with the music? You know, so, you know, the whole thing is about questionable at this point. But I, 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 I gotta, I'm not from South Jersey, so I got it. I'm giving it a mute. <laughs> well, hey, you know, I, what, hey, what did I say, Smith? Say, I said I'm only shouting them out because they're from South Jersey. Didn't I, I know why you know you give you gave them some love. <laughs> I, said I, I am not bound by did. that. I couldn't understand what they were singing. I mean, like you said, so you just really broke it down into the fact that it was the music drowned them out because I couldn't understand one lyric of the song. But anyway. <laughs> All right. On part two of Shout Out, we'll have another performance from my homies, the Dawes Group. <laughs> now, this is my real true homie, and he's always, we can always understand him. It, that's the sound of my favorite underwater friend. It's time for Flip It. Ah, yeah, it's time for Flip It, where I host Defend the View and Flip the Script and Defend the Opposing View. Now, uh, uh, First Lady, folks might not know, but uh, Flipper hooked up with Rich, Richard Branson, and Flipper got his, got his, own, got his own yacht. <laughs> Flipper got a yacht, you know. <laughs> you know, Flipper be hobnobbing with some folks, you know. You know, you know, you know. Flipper don't want to be on Front Street or nothing, but he be hobnobbing, you know, you know, with the right people. And uh, but it is time for Flip It and Money Mayweather. You know, there's just something about Mayweather that that money just really do sound like it should go with his name, don't it? Money Mayweather is having an exhibition bout with a YouTube influencer. Is this a bigger deal for Mayweather or Logan Paul? Defend. This is a big deal, but not for money Mayweather. Logan Paul will take this moment of fame to the bank that money Mayweather probably owns. <laughs> First lady, I'm looking at this and... You know, uh, like I said, that, that money and Mayweather just seem to go together. I, I whatever money get into, uh, Mayweather get into money seem to follow, and uh, so you know he just make money. And uh, 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 this is a much bigger deal for Logan Paul. 
Logan Paul is some two-bit, no, I ain't going to say two-bit, I ain't going to put the man down, but YouTube influencers, quote, I'm I'm kind of like not feeling them. You know, like, who are you and what did you do? You know, and maybe you did something great, great, but so what? <laughs> you know, <laughs> all right. But look, I'm looking at Logan Paul to work his YouTube influencer into a uh, uh, an exhibition bout with a Hall of Fame uh, uh, boxer fighter, you know, because you know, but, you know, Money Mayweather definitely end whenever he, whatever they call it, retirement don't come out, whatever. I mean, you know, so you are a, a YouTube influencer who has had one fight, one fight, and you lost. You lost the one fight, <laughs> yet because you're able to <sighs> have people enamored with you. And I'm not putting this, and I believe you, this is not a put down. <laughs> it's, it's just how it is. <laughs> you are able to enamor enough people where uh, Money Mayweather say, I can make some money out of it. I don't blame Money Mayweather, but Money Mayweather could have made a, a deal with uh, all sorts of people, and he gonna always make his money. You know that's why his money made. But Logan Paul, it, you know, all Logan Paul got to do is show up, just show up. You know, and you know he bigger, all that. You know, just box around with him, run. You know, he ain't really got to try to fight, baby. He just be in the ring and run and stuff. His enamored fans are gonna go off the charts. I was able to have a fight. You, you know, he going to be going to the bank, but Mayweather probably owns that bank. First lady, please defend. <laughs> I mean, this is this exhibition is 100% a big deal for Logan Paul. I mean, let's not let's let's just not even debate that cuz Paul is a YouTube star. And the, actually, he he is making his second professional fight, but he has already. This will be his a third appearance in the ring because both of his fights, one of them was an exhibition with another YouTuber. I mean, YouTube star KSI. You know, it's funny. I don't even know who these people are, but he has fought him as an exhibition, which ended in a draw. And then, as you said, he did lose his really first professional fight to KSI in that match. Now, he he's you know, he's going to this it's going to draw in this exhibition because, you know, you know, just like Conor McGregor, fans are excited about this match because of Logan Paul followers. Spit says he has 20 million followers on YouTube and over 6 million followers on Instagram. So he has the following to make this an exciting match. Now, for Mayweather, I want to know what in the hell is he doing? That's what I want to know. (laughs) He has cheapened the boxing professional, he has cheapened the boxing commodity so much by mm. doing these non-professional fights against non-boxers, Conor McGregor now is Logan Paul. I mean, seriously, real boxing professionals have a hard time getting good matches, and and here you have Mayweather taking up all these matches. Why don't he try to fight somebody? If he wants to have a comeback, why don't he try to fight somebody who really can box? That's what I want to know. If you really are... <laughs> earning to get back into boxing, fight somebody on your level. Because do you really think Logan Paul is going to be able to hit Mayweather? <laughs> I mean, let's look at this. Real boxing professionals have a hard time hitting Mayweather. So why would I think a YouTube star would be able to hit Mayweather? He is the best offensive boxer in the history of boxing. So to me, this will be another boring boxing fight. And the big mistake, to me, a real big mistake for Mayweather's career. Why does Mayweather feel it's important that he continues to take these meaningless 
fight. It's a sham, Spitface. That's what I think of it. It's a sham. <laughs> all right, all right. Let the carnival begin. <laughs> We're going to flip the script at the Fed and opposing view. It's a bigger deal for Money Mayweather. It's all about his entertainment business, and he's the entertainer. He has to make this interesting for his future ventures. Now, uh, First Lady, that, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, one thing that we have to be really clear is, is that this is not a boxing match. This is not a fight. This is a carnival show. This is, uh, uh, it, it, it's not even trying to pretend that there's anything professional about this. But the one thing Money Mayweather knows is making that money. And he knows that the ultimate way for him to keep that little entertainment show going where he ain't got to get in the ring with somebody who can really fight, you know. Why do that when I can make a couple of extra million just, you know, man, I'm just messing around for four or five rounds, you know, so two, three, whatever and stuff, and I'm making a bunch of cash. I ain't got to do all that work I got to do, you know. Money may well. And if he really get the itch to go back in the ring, do that. He can do that, but it's a big deal as far as reputation, and uh, and uh, and part of that, uh, you know, to to make the future is is that it's not just that money Mayweather is gone, duck dodge. Money Mayweather getting ready to beat Paul Logan Paul's ass. Logan Paul about to get an old fashioned butt whooping. Because Money Mayweather is no way going to let him get some kind of credibility that he could fight him. Some, you know, and, 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 you know, really, I mean, he picked up a big old tree. Said, okay, I got this big old tree I got I to gotta chop down. Now, this big old tree, I don't know how to hit. I don't know how to slip punches, do all that stuff. So you ain't for, like, I know how to do that for real. And I've been, you know, uh, you, you know, this is just getting some ring rust off. It, it ain't even a good get ring rust off because I'm going to start wailing on your body. And you're going to see how a tree get dropped. Because what Money Mayweather want to do is knock his butt out. Because this is a big deal because it's money, Mayweather's money, and it's all about being that 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 ringmaster entertainer. And now I got I'm on easy street cash. <sighs> First lady, please defend. <laughs> well. <laughs> This is all about Mayweather making money. He is more than likely, I guess they say he's going to make up to $20 million for this fight. Oh, God. $20 million for this fight. (laughs) This is easy money for Mayweather. And like you said, it's not a fight. It's an exhibition. And there will be, Spitface, now listen to this, no decision. And you can't knock the people out. You can't knock your opponent out. So this is easy money for Mayweather. Mm. I'm like, why are you fighting? You can't knock the person out. So it's going to be a true exhibition. And I seriously doubt that he even trained for this fight. (laughs) Tell me, he barely trained for the um, Conor McGregor fight. So you know he's not training for Logan Paul. (laughs) Mayweather will just can continue to make money from these type of fights because so many people feel that he can be beaten. It's it's really not about Logan Paul. It's about the it's the public, boxing fans. They dislike Floyd Mayweather so much <laughs> that they will pay to watch these type of fights because they believe he can get beaten. He doesn't punch hard, and that's the whole thing about Floyd. His, he really doesn't punch hard. But the problem uh, you know, is, like I said, the c- opponents cannot punch and hit him. That's the problem. That's why he wins his fight. 
his fights uh, are boring. Hasn't he won? Hasn't he won almost half his fights by knockout? Um, I don't remember, but he. I, I said, think it, yeah, I'm, looking it at, just, I'm looking at the lad, his late his last yeah. several fights. He has not won by a knockout. As a matter of fact, no, as a matter of fact, right. I can't remember. The, you know, the one time I remember the last knockout Floyd had. Do you want to know that knockout? If you remember, it was against. Oh, what's that fighter name? You remember when the when the uh, referee uh, was breaking them, and he and the fighter had his hands down, and Floyd hit him <laughs> in the face. <laughs> Dude, I forgot who it was against, but do you oh, remember that no. fight, right? You, yes, I do. I don't remember who that was, but yeah, that was that, cold. That was the last knockout Floyd had, and I don't remember. I forgot who it was, and you saw what type of knockout that was. And the man <laughs> didn't even have his hands up to be to defend himself. Because remember, when the, when a referee says break, they always say you're supposed to defend yourself during the breaks. And he didn't yes. do that, and Floyd knocked him out. But anyway, I'm going to find out his name because I'm going to have to research that, but I can't remember his name. But what I'm saying, yeah, he really doesn't. Floyd, but this, come on, spit face. Floyd really doesn't punch hard. He, he's not a hard puncher. The thing about Floyd, he has a great jab. So when you are repetitively beaten, hit by that jab, <laughs> that's what's going to happen to your face because your face is going to boop, 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 and it's going to go backwards. And, you know, So that's the reason why. He wins so many fights with decisions. He wins so many fights because he is precise with his punching. And he is the best offensive fighter in the history of boxing. So, again, Floyd has nothing to lose on these type of fights, and I just feel that is another money-making scheme. Mm-mm-mm. All right. All right. But at least he show up. <laughs> First lady, please take us to break. Stay tuned. Up next, the funnies and our favorite underwater friend on Flip It Part 2. Money grab and money Mayweather. <laughs> Welcome back. You are still listening to Bras, Panties, and Sports. It's time for the funny spit face. Over to you. All right, firstly, it looks like we have a stupid criminal. All righty. Two men arrested after vehicle search finds drugs in bag marked bag full of drugs. Mm-mm. Okay, two men were arrested in Santa Rosa County, Florida, Saturday after law enforcement officers said they found illegal drugs in a bag labeled bag full of drugs. The men were pulled over by a state trooper for allegedly speeding 25 miles over the limit. Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office K-9 deputies recently assisted FHP on a traffic stop on I-10 where a large amount of narcotics were discovered. Note to self, do not traffic your illegal narcotics in bags labeled bag full of drugs. Our canines can read. <laughs> A Facebook post for the Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office said, the narcotics and other contraband found reportedly included 75 grams of meth stuff, <laughs> 1.36 kilograms of GHB, I think that's a human growth hormone stuff, a gram of cocaine, 3.6 grams of fentanyl, 15 MDMA tablets, and drug paraphernalia. First lady, their first mistake was being illegal, but their second state was driving over the damn speed limit with a whole big ass bag full of drugs, you dummies. Self-inflicted wounds are the worst guy. But gosh darn, if water splashes everywhere, it must be Flipper from his new yacht. It's time for Flipper. First lady, <laughs> over to you. <laughs> oh, boy. The Nets are, are already on a one-game lead in their series with the Bucks. We wonder, will James Harden be the star of the story in this series? Panel defend. James Harden will demonstrate why the move to bring him to the Nets was the best roster decision they made outside of getting KD. Spitface defend. Uh, you know, when you uh, 
uh, hard a bad boy. <laughs> Let's face it, you know, you know, uh, all, you know, he's been in in uh, MVP competition for the last, you know, several years. So you you getting a star quality uh, player, uh, and, and you already got Kyrie, you got uh, KD, you 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 even. Um, uh, got Blake, you know, so, so you know, you got something going. And to just have him there, because now if if anybody, you know, uh, not, with him there and with the talent he brings, if KD, uh, uh, you know, stubs his toe or, you know, or, or Kyrie, you know, going to the third dimension with the, you know, with the fourth eye, because, you know, Kyrie, he can go there. <laughs> You know, you got somebody who who can do damage to the other team himself and score, who doesn't really need anybody to set up the shot point. He can just go do it. So, um, you know, for, you know, they made a dynasty making move with James Harden, and uh, he will show because uh, it, it, it's going to come down whether it's this series. Or the next that uh, that you needed Harden, and uh, look out for him to end up being the, uh, the the MVP of the finals. That's all I'm saying, first lady. Okay, you think he's going to be MVP of the finals? Well, when James Harden has played, he actually has been a great great point guard for the Nets. Kyrie told James. When, you know, when he first was traded, Kyrie told James, you are the point guard. You lead us. And for the majority of the season, James Harden was actually in contention for the MVP since he was traded to the Nets. He was actually playing like a true point guard versus the Houston Rockets, James Harden, that we all became so accustomed to know Dribble, 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 dribble. <laughs> dribble, dribble, dribble. Dribble, dribble, dribble. Always dribbling. <laughs> the Nets definitely made a great steal in this trade because normally whoever gets the superstar always win the trade. Well, there is one exception: the Clippers Paul George trade. We know about oh, that already. Oh, oh. <laughs> There's always one exception, but the Nets clearly traded for James Harden. And, and 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 you know most most pundits really didn't think he would play so well with Durant and Kyrie. You know, a lot of people had their question was raising their eyebrow about that particular trade. But this team is so explosive. I mean, you can't double team these three players. Plus, they have really great sharp shooters surrounding them. Joe Harris. He has the best three-point percentage in the league. You double-team one of them, or you double-team the other, he, they'll fling it over to Joe Harris, and he'll score. And Blake Griffin, my goodness, <laughs> spit face, he needs to return the money he stole from the Detroit Pistons. <clears throat> All of a sudden, James, Har- James Harden has Blake Griffin, Duncan, and looking like his old self from Lob City days with the Clippers. Mm-hmm. Do you remember, Do you know when he was with the Detroit Pistons? I believe he never dunked. Mm. Can you believe that? Yeah, he just fell off the planet. He fell off the planet. He, but like I that said, is. James Harden, he has done a lot for this new New York uh, Brooklyn Nets. I mean. He finally has made his teammates play better. See, that was one of the problems with James Harden. People really thought he just played for himself. But he's making his teammates better. So, yes, this was a great trade for the Brooklyn Nets. And I think, really, it's going to, like you said, they're going to win a championship with this trade. I really think so. All right, but this is Flip It, and we're going to defend the opposing point of view. James Harden is already injured and is preparing his Houdini act. He will disappear. Spitface the fan. <laughs> yeah, the the, uh, the one thing about James Harden that has been consistent 
is when it comes to the playoffs, the, the, for some reason, uh, you know, he's had Rockets teams where they played better, they stepped up, but he disappeared in the playoffs. He all of a sudden, you know, uh, you know, could forgot that other guys were there, you know, and dribbled. Your, now, uh, uh, the Nets are set up where you that dang what happened. He did too many, too many bad boys on the team, and James Harden will not be the one. What they will see is is that you know what. Uh, uh, maybe we didn't need to make that trade for Harden because, one, he ain't here. <laughs> and we got somebody else that's stepping up that's, you know, uh, I put it like this, a less a lesser hit on the salary. But James Harden is, uh, the, the, the other thing is this. Kyrie Irving has played in the rough and tough East. He's played there. That is not the same game as in the West. And once Katie and once Harden, especially Harden, once them bodies start being up on them, uh, yeah, they're going to be looking to, to dish. KD going to get his, you know. But the thing about Harden, once people start really bodying him, his game, he start fading back and his game changes. So you can't double team all any one of them that you double team. But if you're gonna do it, you're gonna hit hard. You're gonna start uh, 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 putting that body on Harden, making making him have to do stuff, and Harden get tired of that. He good for a game, but he get tired. Oh, oh, you gonna just keep doing this? Then all of a sudden you break him down. So uh, uh, and like I said, that they're, they're gonna be it's gonna be whether it's his big toe. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, I don't think it's going to be a growing pool, <laughs> but something's going to uh, happen with Harden. It just just work out that way. That that's all I'm saying, first. Thing. You say whatever <laughs> happens is going to happen to him. Something always happens. Well, you know, I look at it this way, uh, Spitzay. James Harden has always been an MVP player during the regular season. You can't take away his play during the regular season. He did it with the Rockets for many years, and he just did it for the Nets since he was traded to them. So I look at it this way. Where will where would the Nets have been in the regular season without James Harden? Kyrie and Durant were injured most of the season. However, now Harden couldn't even finish the first game in the second <laughs> round of the playoffs. He re-aggravated his hamstring injury. Now, we know it takes a long time for players to come back from hamstring injuries. It, it's a long time. Now, and this is so unusual for Harden because normally he does a disappearing act during when he's playing the game. <laughs> he, he disappears <laughs> when he's playing. Now he's completely disappearing from playing in the playoff game. So this is going to be a major problem for the Nets. I mean, can they do it with just Kyrie and Durant? It's a possibility. It's a possibility. But to be honest with you, Spitzface, they really need Harden to be able to really to run over these teams and come out of the East. I mean, I mean, they did play well against the Bucks. I mean, the Bucks, but I expected them to win that first game against the Bucks because the Bucks had finished their um, um, playoff game against the Heat so long ago that they're going to have rust. So it'll be interesting in the second game if Harden will be back. But Harden, man, is now all of a sudden he's doing disappearing acts because of an injury. So he's it's always something with Harden. It's always <laughs> something. It's either he can't. It's either he doesn't play well in the playoffs, especially the important games of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Those usually those games to get them to that finals to win the or to get to the conference finals is always something where he comes up short in these type of games. But man, the possibility of him missing these games because of injury, I don't think nobody saw that. All right, Spitface, please take us to break. That's up everybody in Houston. Uh, <laughs> on the other side of the break, we have another performance from the 
Don's group on Shout Out Part 2. Please, please keep your ears on those speakers and stay tuned. My cousin. You are listening to Bras, Panties, and Sports. It's time for Shout Out Part 2, the picks and the finale. The music flows from around the globe to get a shout out from the crew. Spit face, over to you. All right. <laughs> we have another performance from South Jay-Z, the Dodds Group. DJ, let's hear. Let your love... South Jersey, what's the word? Oh, uh, well, that one was definitely much better. Um, I thought the music fit the song, and you could understand the lyrics. But, you know, pretty much it was just let your love go. But uh, <laughs> but I'm going to shout it out again, Spit Face. I'm going to shout them out. Those are my homie. Anybody doing well <laughs> from South Jersey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 the one thing that made the, the song much better was it was shorter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't have to be tortured as much. And uh, 
uh, the production was just still just just bad. And uh, but I think that they that, that they have a they have a purpose, but they trying to do too much in one song, and uh, you know uh, work on your lyrics and your vocals uh, or something. But uh, I gotta hit the mute. Now that is the end of shout out. If you like what you heard from the Dodds group. Now, uh, check them out on the Old Grumpy Radio Network. And if you're in South Jersey, you know, and they perform them, give them a holler. Give them a holler. Check them out. We send them some love. Now, if you'd like to be heard or have any comments, please send your emails and tracks to content at oldgrumpyradio.com. First lady, back to you. Okay. It's time for the hardball picks. Who will wear the crown? All right, Spitface. So the production, the production um, assistant, they finally got the um, stats together. And 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 uh, let me give you the stats, and then I have a request from them. Okay. So in last week's stats, well, let me go to the week before. So that was what we were missing. The week before, um, I had five hundred thousand points. Spitface, you had minus five hundred thousand points. Last week, I had 2 million points. Spitface, you had 3 million points. So currently, the standings are I'm leading with 3.45 million, 3,450,000. Million Spitface, you're out of the red into the black. You have 1,140,000 points. So let's get to the current. Picks and um, oh, but yeah. Let me tell you with the production assistants. The production assistants say, producers, please don't try to do those individual stats like how many uh, points LeBron, how many assists or how many steals LeBron had, and compared to I guess because they say they got to go through all the games. But, <laughs> but guess what? LeBron is no longer in the playoffs, so we probably won't have to worry about that anymore. <laughs> that's what they that's what they told me, Spitface. So we have to relay that to our producers. Okay. So let's go. By the end of next Saturday or Saturday, the Bucks will lead series uh, over don't, don't we have an option? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. We have an option. Uh I forgot about the option. Okay, I'm so sorry. This is an optional bet, bonus bet, bet maximum two million dollars, two, two million, two million points. Excuse me, I wish it was two million dollars. <laughs> Mavs <laughs> will win series over Clippers. All right, I'm going to take this option, and I'm going to say no, and I'm going to get my two million points. Bit face. Oh. What about you? Uh, I. You know, I'm going to roll the dice big and go with the Mavs for the max $2 million. Wow, you rolling the dice. That's unusual for a spit face. I just All right. don't trust the Clippers. You don't trust them Clippers. Well, I'm going to trust the Clippers on this one because, again, they're on, they on home turf. They need to win this game. Okay, so let's go on to the regular picks by the end of Saturday, next Saturday, the Bucks will lead the series over the net. 750000 for the correct answer, minus 750000 for the incorrect answer. I am saying, hmm, let's see. I want to say yes. I'm going to take a flyer on that one. Spit face? Mm, you're going to say yeah. I'm going to go no. Okay. All right. Sixers will lead the series over Hawks. Seven hundred fifty thousand for the correct answer, minus seven hundred fifty thousand for the incorrect answer. Spitface. Hmm. Don't the seventy sixers have a major injury? Let's see. I'm gonna roll with the Sixers. You gonna roll with the Sixers? Well, I'm rolling with the Hawks because the way the Hawks played the Knicks, I really think they can beat. The Sixers, especially if Joe, Joel Embiid is not playing. Without, I mean, I mean, they need Joel Embiid to play because 
I mean, we all know Ben Simmons doesn't shoot. <laughs> <laughs> so who's going to make up his points? Who's going to make up Joel Embiid's point? All right, so um, the Denver Nuggets will the, lead the series over the Suns. 750,000 mm. is the correct answer. Minus 754, the incorrect answer. Okay. Uh, I think, ooh, this is a tough one. I'm going to take the Suns. I'm going to take the Suns. Spit face. You know, uh, you know, this is the series to watch, the the Nuggets and the Suns series. Uh, I'm going to go with the Suns. I'm rolling with the Suns. Yeah, that. I think that is definitely going to seven, definitely. But I keep forgetting. Uh, oh no, they're going to. They start out in uh, Phoenix. Yeah, but when they get to the my mile high uh, Colorado, that's when things fall apart for people because that day <laughs> players have a hard time playing with that high altitude. Okay, James Harden will have a triple double. Uh, I doubt it because he probably won't even play. So I think. I'm saying no. James Harden will not have a triple double. Spit face. Where where you go? Where 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 you at? Oh uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> where you at? <laughs> I don't think he's. I mean, it's hard to come back for a hamstring injury. The hamstring injury kept him out the latter part of the season. So hamstring, I mean, green groins, you know. Yeah, they huff, they tough. Pinky finger, you name it. <laughs> Okay. Migraines. <laughs> Harden got more for everything. <laughs> Jazz will lead their series. Who did? Oh, right, right. We won't know until who they're playing until after today. I mean, after yes, yeah, Sunday's game. So, um, um, I'm going to say yes. Jazz will lead their series. Yeah, I, I go, yeah. Whoever they face, they're going to lead the series because they, they don't have a little time to kind of. Kick back and just prepare. Yeah, but the problem is they don't know who to prepare for. And unfortunately, as you saw with the Bucks, they were a little bit rusty when they came out. So, but I'm going to say they will lead. They will lead the series too. But it it is is questionable because I think when you have them long layoffs, it's very difficult because uh, most of these teams are fighting to the end. Like the two teams, they're going to come in already in ready mood. So, but anyway. Spitface, what is your top story to watch this week? All right, this will, this will be building momentum, and that is that the retired black NFL players are not getting the same compensation uh, as the white players because in the agreement there's this thing about uh, basically uh, the black players are inherent inherently, uh, let's say, uh, less intelligent. So the impact on them, you know, just, you know, it, what it points to is the plantation mentality that exists in the NFL even today. But that's, that, that's the top story to watch this week uh, as uh, the NFL, you know, uh, that tries to respond to this. Hmm. Hmm. What? <laughs> wow! I didn't. That is a big story. I mean, woo, uh, we. I, I'm surprised. I, I mean, I didn't realize that there would be a difference in an agreement for uh, retired football players. My goodness, we got to. You know, from the from the concussion. Uh, you know, concussion settlement. Mm-hmm. Basically, the the brain damage to the black players uh, 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 is because there are inherent inherent, uh, deficiencies already. uh, uh, The impact, you know, uh, like I said, watch the story. It's it's just yeah, I'm definitely going to watch. I'm going to look into that. It's going to be one of the top stories. Okay. Well, I'm going with Aaron Rodgers' situation because now his situation has come to a head that the Green Bay Packers will have to make a decision whether or not they're going to trade Aaron Rodgers because I I, I forgot that I think within this time, within this week or something, 
they will have to either trade him before they get the cap hit, and um, that's an interesting thing because also involuntary OTAs will be starting very, very soon. Now, Aaron Rodgers did not show up to the voluntary um, OTAs, and we will see if he doesn't show up to the involuntary ones because that's when he's going to get fined. And, um, you know, Aaron Rodgers, you know, said he's not, he don't want to come back to the Green Bay Packers as long as the general manager is there. And the main thing, Aaron Rodgers really, really wants to have his contract renegotiated. He wants an extension on his contract. That's what he really, really wants, and it seems like the Green Bay Packers just do not want to give it to him, mm-hmm. and they think because they have Jordan Love. But they said recently the reason why Jordan Love couldn't play is because he can't, he can't seem to remember the playbook. <laughs> That's not good. So that whole, this whole Aaron Rodgers situation, I mean, I really think it's a it's a big, big, big story, real big, real big. So anyway, we'll see. Those are two big stories that we got to find out about. A shout out to the Veteran Women's Enterprise Center, our partners in empowering our women warriors fighting the business battle. Visit them at veteranwomensec.org. Again, veteranwomensec.org. Please visit us at broadspantysports.com where you'll find links for the latest episode. This is Cheryl Smith, the First Lady of Sports Talk and Spitface. You have been listening to Bras, Panties, and 